meeting. So now we will turn to our third speaker for today, Betsy. Her, her, um, she is a, a Toastmaster who looks forward to learning from everyone. And her speech is called Speeches About Speeches. She is in the Innovative Leadership Path Level 1, and her speech is five to seven minutes. So Betsy, over to you. Thank you, Madam Toast Leader, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests. Late last year, Carol approached me about joining Toastmasters. I wasn't entirely surprised. She's been working tirelessly to grow US Senate Toastmasters and she had not yet solicited me. So the day finally came and she asked if I would join. She said I wouldn't have to do any speeches. I thought it was strange that speeches weren't required by a public speaking club, but she seemed so earnest that I signed up. I've since learned she may have slightly undersold the speaking requirements, but I'm smart enough to know I should have read the fine print. Anyway, I'm glad to be here delivering my first long form speech to this club. I actually asked for the opportunity to address you today to speak about speeches. I'm an avid amateur photographer. I'm not great, but not bad either. I become a better photographer by practicing the rules of composition learning about depth of field, building my processing skills in Lightroom and Photoshop, having a foundation skill level that allows me to have some flexibility in my photographic craft. My photography goals are, always, are not always the same. Sometimes I'm a documentarian, making a photograph in order to capture a moment I wanna, relate, I wanna remember later, maybe share with friends. When I develop a documentary image, I remove distractions like extraneous branches and leaves. And I bring light to areas that are hidden and I create movement to draw the eye through the image. I want these edits to enhance the image, but I don't want them to be distracting. I want it to be a genuine reflection of the moment I experienced. Sometimes I'm creative. I start with a sound photograph and use processing techniques to, um, to bring my artistic vision to life. I like my, my creative touch to reflect what I'm feeling in the moment. It might not be to others' taste, but it opens my mind to see beyond what I see with my eyes. Sometimes photographers can get a little too creative with their images. The creativity overpowers rather than enhances the beauty of the subject. This actually hurts my eyes to look at it. It's always important to have a sense of what you're trying to convey when you make a photo. Isn't this a pretty chrysanthemum? If you're overly concerned with the details and lose sight of the complete picture, you can end up with a result that is not at all your artist's intent. We build this as a speech about speeches. So why am I nattering on about photography? Public speaking is both a craft and an art. We come to Toastmasters to learn best practices, to try things out, to develop our skills. And sometimes our speeches are like documentary photographs. We take in information and try and convey that information to others exposing the meaning behind the data, leading them through the content. The fundamental structure of our speech should be sound and the techniques we use should support the intention of the speech. They should help our audience understand what we wanna convey and remember the content we brought them. Rules help us deliver our message effectively and becoming skilled allows us to consciously break the rules in service of that craft. For example, understanding composition can allow a photographer to make a beautiful picture of a chrysanthemum, highlighting its beauty. Not understanding can, can result in a hilarious photo of a blossom bunny tail, a chrysanthemum, if you will. We can break the rules, but it should be conscious and for a specific purpose. Sometimes our speech can be more creative. Sometimes, uh, or per perhaps we're trying to deliver a humorous speech or telling a story. We can add our own flair to both the content and delivery, but we can't add so many embellishments that our audience remembers the flourishes and forgets the story. 
Have you ever seen a speech, perhaps even at Toastmasters, that had too much vocal variety or too many hand gestures? As an amateur photographer, I sometimes wonder why I make so many photos when so many have made better photos of the same subject. Then I realized my camera changes the way I see things. Making the, photo, making the act of photography a, a transformative experience. The resulting photos are bonus material. The experience is the thing. Sometimes the very act of crafting a speech can help hone our understanding of a subject. And the speech product is a reflection of the learning we've gained. Now a few words about feedback, and this might be a little controversial. Feedback is important, and we spend a good bit of time on it in every Toastmasters meeting. Relevant feedback can help us improve our public speaking. We've all heard that feedback is a gift, but let's face it, sometimes gifts are the wrong size, duplicative of what you already have, or completely not your style. And that's okay. We can say thank you, if not for the gift itself, but for the sentiment that prompted it and keep growing our craft. Disempowering feedback can blunt our message or silence our voice. We may, be, we may be called upon to deliver messages to people who are not ready to hear what we have to say. Some of us have heard this from folks who see our speeches as too political, too strident, or too gay. Well, maybe that last one is just me. We have to retain the strength of our convictions when we speak. Sometimes messages that challenge the status quo can elicit pushback. This is a feature, not a bug. Important messages can make some people uncomfortable, and we have to distinguish between a legitimate critique and resistance to our message. And we have to be honest with ourselves and integrate those suggestions that will help us grow, but we don't have to wear everything that's gifted to us. The most important voices are our own, and then sagacious, qualified people we've asked for feedback people with whom we, have a nuance, we can have a nuanced conversation about our work, our methods, our motives, like our fellow Toastmasters. Art, whether it be photographs or speeches, is not about what other people think about our art. It's about what we say through that art. Have we met our intent? Did we convey the information we needed to share? Has our audience received our message? Whether we're delivering a speech in our professional life or telling a story to a group of friends, our task is to create the best art we can with the tools we have and those we can acquire. Making a photograph or crafting a speech helps us slow down to consider what's before us. It helps us pay attention to remember the details and to bring that experience to others. Thank you for this opportunity to reflect a bit on the art and craft of photography and public speaking. And this process helped me frame what I'm trying to do in Toastmasters. And I hope I left you with a few thoughts to ponder as well. Madam Toast Leader. Thank you very much, Betsy.